hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. Um, today is a cheeky little book haul. It's a, a, it's kind of an early birthday present for myself mostly yeah because my birthday is in about a week and a half two weeks from now maths days i don't know so i have some books because i very recently went to waterstones and uh, picked up books so some of the books i have here are pre-orders that i picked up and some of the books are you know picked up right from the store I did very much forget to actually film going book shopping. Why? Yeah, terrible vlogger person. <sighs> yeah, but what are you gonna do? So I have a bunch of books. I have them in my Waterstones bag here. I cannot actually lift up the bag now because it's way too heavy. I can't barely, I can barely, carry it yeah that's how heavy it is it's stock full of new books and i'm very excited i will very cheekily take a thumbnail picture with an empty bag later <laughs> but shh, nobody needs to know that except i just told you so shh. exciting times so i think I mean, I mean, the books are going to come in no particular order whatsoever. I'm just going to take whatever's on top and, like, dig through the bag. So, first off is two quick reads books uh, that I found by the register because, I don't know, sometimes you find them by the register, sometimes you find them, in, like, in the shelves. I like them because they're teeny tiny and also they cost a pound. And, yeah. So the first one here is a Peter James one. It's called Wish You Were Dead. And I've never read any Peter James. I think my mum has. I think my mum has a couple of Peter James books. Oh, it's someone else that's called Peter and or James. I don't know. But I believe it's like a thrillery mystery something. Peter James is one of the best British crime writers. That's a quote from Lee Child. So, you know, I don't know if it's part of a series, if it's like a short novella, if it's just like cheesy chapters. You never know with these <laughs> unless you look them up. I just picked them up, bought them and brought them home. And then I will figure stuff out. It works sometimes. But yeah, so... Um bit of crime reading I suppose yes uh the other short um the other short the, the other quick reads is by Agatha Christie's called the double clue and other Hercule Poirot stories I did kind of look this up and apparently there are loads of Hercule Poirot, Poirot. Jesus I can't say things sometimes well, ever. Apparently, there are loads of Hercule Poirot stories. Sh well, stories and short stories. And apparently, there supposedly are quite a few of them just in this one. Possibly four. Possibly four. So, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna, like, start reading this one until I figure out all the uh, other Agatha Christie books. They're loads and I kind of want to read them in some kind of order so there's like cohesion throughout um, but having bought this um, now I need to pick up Agatha Christie books which I have been meaning to do for years but you know other books come other books call my name okay uh, but yeah, now I have this one, so, you know, no excuses. I need to fill up those, those shelves. Next up is the latest Page Tomb book, Only Love Can Hurt Like This. And it's the first book with her new publishers, so that's exciting. So all um, the covers, the cover for this one differs a lot from the old covers, which I don't mind. I do prefer the old covers, but I don't mind this one. This is the kind of covers like this that I 
that I can stand. <laughs> I mean, I would have bought Page Tune's book, whatever the cover looked like, because I love Page Tune. Page Tune writes good. <laughs> she writes a good stuff. Um, I mean, she does write books that make you cry like a baby. But that's good sometimes. Sometimes that's good. I have no idea what this one is about, but um, as far as I know, it's going to make me um, sob like a little child. So that's, that's fun. But yeah, kept meaning to get like the special edition one. So Asda has like this pink sprayed edges and then you can find the yellow sprayed edges in Tesco. Um, I did see the yellow sprayed edges one in Tesco, but I already picked this one up in Waterstone. So I was like, mm, I do like it, but I think I wanted the pink ones more. But I never went to Asda. My mum went to Asda. Did she pick him up for me? No, I don't think she even looked for it. Naughty, naughty mummy. Whenever I feel like crying, I shall be picking this one up. Let's, you know, let's read some blurbs. Let's do that. When Ren realizes her fiance is in love with someone else, she thinks her heart will never recover. On the other side of the world, Anders lost his wife four years ago and is still struggling to move on. Ren hopes that spending the summer with her dad and stepfamily on their farm in Indiana will help her to heal. There, amid the cornfields and fireflies, she and Anders cross paths and their worlds are turned upside down again. But Ren doesn't know that Anders is harboring a secret and if he acts on any feelings he has for Ren, it will have serious fallout for everyone. Oh, page two. Why you do me like this? So excited. I've been meaning to pick up this book for a while as well. And um, when I saw they still had the like limited edition ones, well, not limited edition. I don't think it's limited edition. Maybe just special covers. I don't know. But it's Ninth House by Liba Dugan. As you can see, it has the gold black one and it's not just the other one, which I'll put up a picture here, which is usually the cover you see. So I don't know what this is about either, funnily enough. Uh, but it's one I've been meaning to get to for some time. I don't know what I'm gonna do about the second book yet because I hate, I bloody hate that cover. This cover. Why? Don't don't give me covers like this because I'm gonna have to get it. But I don't wanna look at it because it's a bleh. Let's let's read some blurbs because let's just do that today. Welcome to the ninth house. Galaxy Alex Stern. Oh okay is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class, a dropout and the sole survivor of a horrific unsolved crime. Alex was hoping for a fresh start, but her free ride comes with a catch. She has been tasked with monitoring Yale's secret societies, notorious haunts of the rich and powerful. Now there's a dead girl on campus and Alex is the only person willing to look deeper because the societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with the forbidden magic, they raise the dead, and sometimes they prey on the living. That is a lot more than I actually knew about the book. Yale Secret Societies rings a bell. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about the second book before I start reading this one, but I have been wanting to read this for a good while, so moving on. I think these are both, yeah. So a while back now, I read Mythos by Stephen Fry, and it's like, it's Greek retelling, and I love me some Greek retelling. Well, not really Greek retelling, it's more like retelling the old myths in a more modern twist, modern, modern way. And, I mean, I've loved Stephen Fry since forever, so I was bound to pick up Stephen Fry and Greek mythology. It, it just, it sang to me. So, there are more books which I haven't picked up until now. So, I have Troy, which is, like, it's Troy. <laughs> 
Wow. So it's the the story of when Paris kidnaps the most beautiful woman in the world, which is Helen. War. The war happens when you do that. Um, so I'm excited to read a new... I know most of the story. It's very familiar. I don't... I don't think I've ever read, like, the full story. Possibly not, but I'm very familiar about the story. Wow. Um, so, at some point, I shall be reading this. Hmm, I also picked up Heroes, which I believe is with Jason and the Argonauts. So, well, Jason aboard the Argos looking for the Golden Fleece. Hercules, Twelve Labors, Medusa. Yeah. There's, there's loads more, loads more. I'm very excited to pick these up when I'm feeling Greek. So last year in like, was it like February or something? Last year, anyway, in 2022, the anticipated Crescent City sequel, which is House of Sky and Breath, came out in hardback. And it was said that, well, you have to wait a year to get a paperback, which I had no problem doing. I did get uh, some proper shit uh, for not reading it and, you know, discussing it and whatnot. Uh, but I'm like, all my Sarah J Maas books are exactly the same height. I can't be bringing in a hardback amongst these paperbacks. I, I just can't. No. And if I do that, I'm going to have to get the hardbacks of all the books. Which, I mean, it could happen. I'm not going to lie. But there's so many more books I want to get. I don't need all the duplicates so far. So, you know, I, I found out How's This Guy in Breath was coming out so I was like yes perfect pre-order that little gem so I can have it like straight away I got it but but what's this this cover doesn't match the old one the old one is so high up this is how the first Crescent City book House of Earth and Blood looks like the one I have which is up there somewhere it's way too high I'm not getting it no and this doesn't match that book what's happened what's happened here hmm hmm excuse me so you know I had to get this one too didn't I yeah and I mean these match <laughs> this is how I buy all the books so many times this is how they get me this is how they get me i mean it's funny though because i didn't want to buy the hardback of this one because it wouldn't match size wise with all the other books but then i had to buy this one again because it has a new cover why do you do this to me book people why do you do this to me <laughs> yeah so reread of this will be happening and then a uh, first time read of this. Although first I do have to finish the the Akata one. What's it called? A Court of Silver Flames? The Nesta one. The orange one. It's in my bedroom. I am not getting it. Okay. What's next? What's next? I do believe this is like the only non-fiction I have in this pile of books and it's an autobiography by Sam Neill. Did I ever tell you this? A memoir. How good is this picture? Also it's kind of giving me George Lucas vibes. Why are you giving me George Lucas vibes Sam Neill? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's so many, like, little quotes from famous people. So, Stephen Fry says, Hilarious, wicked, wonderful, kind, thoughtful, engaging, and wise. I saw on 
Oh, it's another Stephen Fry one here. A fabulously entertaining, insanely readable memoir of a life richly, royally, rambunctiously and righteously lived. Wow, with the word Stephen Fry. <laughs> Meryl Streep says, just wonderful, so funny and charming and sharp. Sam Neill's lively, lovely book made me laugh out loud. Laura Dern, who he was in Jurassic Park with, Sam Neill is a legend and in this magnificent book he shares his stories of family, friends and film with delicious irreverence, compassion and grace. I kind of went dyslexic there. Yeah. And Jane Campion, who I'm not too sure who that is. Do I know? I don't know. Did I ever tell you this? Is tender, funny, emotional, modest and generous, both unbearably sad and deliciously companionable. Com oh my god, with the words. Jeez, people. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, whenever I'm feeling memoir, autobiography non-fiction mood this will be among them i do have quite the collection of uh autobiography non-fiction books right now well it's not a many it's a handful uh, but they're all chunky ones so that's that's fun yeah okay next one we are guessing to the bottom of the bag but that doesn't mean there's not quite a few more books going on so this is the art of prophecy by wesley chu cho cho Ooh, ooh! i'm gonna be crucified for this the war arts saga so this is the first one in that i don't know what this is about but something and it's it's stunning I think I accidentally changed the angle a bit. Um, my camera overheated. Great. That might happen a couple more times, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, I was uh, on the Art of Prophecy and I was uh, like, just admiring the stunning, I mean, why, why? This is why I have no money. <laughs> um, oh, there's maps. There, there, oh no. So the, um, the naked hardback is just naked. Um, but look at that. Oh. Do we have more? Do we have more? Is that the same or a different one? It's possibly the same. I think it's the same. Um whoa ah madness all right let's um let's read the blurb prophecies don't make heroes they only choose them yeah the prophecy is clear oh no when jean is the chosen one born to defeat the immortal eternal khan and save the kingdom the only problem is that the prophecy is wrong i like this so far jean has been raised in splendor trained by the best warriors and celebrated before a single battle has been won well that's just gonna give him a big head isn't it when the prophecy is proven to be incorrect jean still has a has to find a way to succeed and maybe even become a hero in his own right good for you to save the kingdom an unlikely band of heroes rise oh no Ta taishi taishi oh no okay an old grandmaster who swore her days of battle were over sally a warrior re-evaluating her allegiances and Kisami, an assassin with questionable values. Together, the four embark on a journey more wondrous than any prophecy could foresee. I'm sorry for the pronunciations of the names. Um, I'm terrible at that. But yeah, ooh, I wonder how many there are going to be in this series. It's a saga, so a few. We'll see. I'll have to look it up and see. Honestly, 
now I'm kind of excited to pick that up. Oh, next up is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. Yeah. Um, so I very, very recently read The Fall, Cruel Prince and um, The Tithe and all those series. And um, The Stolen Air is like set after the Cruel Prince series and it follows Oak, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is like the main protagonist in the Quill Prince's half stepbrother. It's her brother in some way, shape, or form. Not by blood, though, but some way. Um, so I'm very excited to like continue on. I hear mixed reviews on the whole thing, but I'm still very excited. Uh, I will have to look up how many books there's going to be in this series because I know this is going to be at least one more, possibly two, mm, at least one more. So I'm going to look up when that will come out because I might have to wait until they're all out so I can, you know, binge them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just boring. Yes, have yellow end papers. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm making a pile and it's not very stable. Uh, I will definitely come to regret my life choices on that one, but yeah, okay. So what do we have, what do we have? We have Atlanta by Jennifer Saint. Ooh, ah, oh my goodness. Well, it's boring there, but ooh, look at those end papers. What do we have on the back? It's the same thing. Oh, that's how Jennifer Saint looks like. Cool. I did not know that. Did I? No, I don't think so. So, ooh, I'm not too sure um, where this story is. Uh, let's see. Uh, when a daughter is born to the king of Acadia, she only brings disappointment. Oh. <laughs> Abandoned on the mountainside, the defenseless infant Atlanta is left to the mercy of a passing mother bear and raised alongside the cubs under the protective eye of the goddess Artemis. Swearing that she will prove her worth alongside the famed heroes of Greece, Atlanta leaves her forest to join Jason's band of Argonauts. But can she carve out her own place in the legends in a world made for men? So, uh, Greek retelling? Yes. Um, I don't know much about this one. It's not ringing any bells as such. But I'm very excited to pick it up because I have Ariadne by Jennifer Sane. It is a paperback though. It's still stunning, but now I'm wishing it was a hardback. I'm gonna have to rethink that. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. And now we have a very chunky one. So it is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. And it's in the Priory of the Orange Tree, I want to say era, but that's not the one I want to say. I do believe this is a prequel to that book. No, it just says international best-selling author of the Priory. Um, cool. Oh, dear lord. Um, blah, 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 blah. let's see, I don't wanna. Intricate and epic, a day of fallen night sweeps readers back to the world of the Priory of the Orange Tree, showing us a course of events that shaped it for generations to come. So I do believe it's prequel. Oh, it's just blue, but this though. That's stunning. Also, signed, very nice, a very nice. That's so cool. Do we have, it's, it's the same on the back. It kind of looks like a map in a dragon. 
which is kind of funky. Ooh, ah. So yeah, a very, very chunky book. Ooh, do I dare push it on top of the rest ones? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm going for it. Yeah. And next up we have a uh, Song of Silver Flame Like Night uh, by Emily Wen Chow Chow. Sorry. Um this cover is just absolutely stunning and it's only feels more stunning with the orange and sprayed edges, <laughs> not end papers. Uh wow. It does have very blue and papers boring black but wow that is the combination of the blue end papers and the orange sprayed edges is hilarious oh i saw something here it's signed by the author okay where oh that's her signature? Jeez. That's her signature. I would not have been able to tell. Not gonna lie. Oh, she's also written the Blood Air series. Blood Air, Red Tigress and Crimson Rain. I'm gonna have to look her up, not gonna lie. Um, I don't know what this is about, but I do see names on the back that I recognize. Let's read. In a fallen kingdom, one girl carries the key to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at its heart. Once, Lan had a different name. Now, she goes by the one the Elantian colonizers gave her. She spends her day scavenging for remnants of the past, for anything that might help her understand the strange mark burned into her arm by her mother in her last act before she died. Oh, that seems like a lot. Now, no one can see the mysterious mark until the night sun appears at the tea house and saves her life. <gasps> There's a tea house. Zen is a practitioner, one of the fabled magicians of the Last Kingdom, whose abilities were rumoured to be drawn from the demons they communed with. Oh, okay. Magic believed to be long lost, magic to be hidden at all costs. Both Lan and Zen have secrets buried deep within. Fate has connected them, but their destiny remains unwritten. Both hold the power to liberate their land, and both hold the power to destroy the world. Oh my goodness. That was a lot more than I was expecting. I don't know. Somehow, I was kind of expecting some fairy tale ish esque story. Maybe it still is, but um, from that blurb, it might be a lot more. <laughs> Oh, I'm so worried about that pile. Eep. What do we have? What do we have? We have In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Clune. So this is the Waterstone signed exclusive edition. And I have seen, um, I think, is it, it's either Feralu or Illumicurate. One of them um, have released a very stunning edition of, of this book. I thought this one was good, but wow. Um, so this is what my copy looks like. And I mean, <laughs> the intricacy of the sprayed edges. Yes. Do I know what this book is about? No, I do not. So, oh, and that's the signature. <laughs> um, okay. Welcome to the heart of a peculiar forest and the beginning of an extraordinary journey. In a small home built into the branches of a tree live a human named Victor and three robots. Well, I didn't expect that. 
These are pleasantly sadistic nurse machine, a small vacuum desperate for love and attention, and a fatherly inventor android named Giovanni Lawson. Together they're a family, hidden and safe. Wow. Then Vic salvages an unfamiliar android label, Hap. He learns that Hap has an... <laughs> He learns that Hap and Geo share a dark past where they hunted humans. Oh my goodness. And Hap unwittingly gives away Geo's location before they know it. Before they know it, robots from Geo's former life arrive to capture and return the android to his old laboratory in the city of Electric Dreams. The rest of the unconventional family must travel across an unforgiving and otherworldly country to rescue Geo from decommissioning. Or worse, reprogramming. Along the way, Vic must decide if he can handle his feelings for Hap, even if they come with strings attached. Oh my goodness. Well. Oh, inspired by the adventures of Pinocchio. That makes the Giovanni one sense, yeah. Uh, and the swish, swish? The Swiss Family Robinson. I, I'm not too familiar with the Swiss Family Robinson story per se, but yeah, okay. Interesting. I do still really like that one though. I'm so scared for that pile. Okay, next up we have one for my enemy by olive blake waterstones exclusive edition i feel like that's the exclusive part oh my god i like it oh okay we have some uh some cheeky end papers here let's let's check the back one Oh, it's different. Okay, hang on. Whoop. My hand is probably in the way of something. <laughs> I don't know what this one is about either. So let's just uh, go for it. I want to say it's a fantasy because of the drawings, but you know. Um, in New York City, two rival witch families fight for the upper hand. Okay, the Antonova sisters are beautiful, cunning, and ruthless, and their mother, known only as Baba Yaga, <laughs> is an elusive supplier of premium intoxicants. Their adversaries, the influential Fedorov brothers, serve their crime boss father, oh my, named Kosci? 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 I don't know, the deathless. His enterprise dominates the shadows of magical Manhattan. For 12 years, the families have maintained a fraught stalemate. Then everything is thrown into disarray. Bad blood carries them to the brink of disaster, even as fate draws together a brother and sister from either side. Yet the sibling still struggles for power and internal conflicts could destroy each family from within. That is, if the M and mimi uh, and and mimi oh and and mimi oh fuck's sake that is if the enmity i can't say that word between empires doesn't destroy both sides first why am i getting like romeo and juliet vibes it doesn't say i'm gonna have to look that up it's giving me romeo and juliet vibes it's also giving me an episode of something i want to say supernatural but also i don't know could be anything. I watch a lot of Toy Ring, I'm not gonna lie. So, I've only read one Oliver Blake, I think, and it's Alone With You in the Ether. I do have the Atlas Paradox. I don't have the Atlas Sixes. I, I don't have the Atlas Six yet, but it is, it, it's coming at some point. I need to find it basically um but yeah this sounds a lot different from the alone with you and the ether one so i'm excited bring on some like witchy family feuds what else was it i feel like 
I feel like the brothers are like demons or something. I don't know. The book is stunning though. Oh my god. I'm so scared. I don't think I made it better by doing that. Oh no. Alright. Next up. Uh, another stunning like rose. It's not roses, it's leaves, but it kind of looks like it. So it's Clytemnestra, Clytemnestra, the Greek one, um, by Constanza Cassati. There's a sticker in a way, I can't really see. Exclusive edition signed by the author. But I, I'm just like vibing with all this gold. Whoa. And we have these kinds of end papers. Oh my goodness. Uh, as for queens, they are either hated or forgotten. She already knows which option suits her best. You're born to a king but marry a tyrant. That sounds like hell. You stand helplessly as he sacrifices your child to placate the gods. Oh no. You watch him wage war on a foreign shore and comfort yourself with violent thoughts of your own. You play the part fooling enemies who deny you justice. Slowly you plot. You are this name. <laughs> but when the husband who owns you returns in triumph, what then? Acceptance or vengeance? Infamy follows both. So you bide your time and wait until you might force the gods' hands and take revenge until you rise, for you understand something that others don't. If power isn't given to you, you have to take it for yourself. Yes. Uh, set in the world of ancient Greece and told through the eyes of its greatest heroine, Clytemnestra, I can't say the words, the names. Uh, is a tale of power and prophecy, of hatred, love, and an unforgettable queen who fiercely dealt out death to those who wronged her. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Right, I think we only have two books left. So. <laughs> and this one is The Adventures of Amina al Sirafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Ooh, so I read what's it called do we have a like cheat cheat this is your bras that's the one that didn't take me long at all <laughs> oh, they have different ones. so I read that one I'm still I still have some mixed feelings about that one but I do want to continue on with the series so I can find out what happens so no spoilers I don't care I forget about spoilers. Anyway, so the end papers on the back for this one has this this drawing. I do feel like isn't this like the same as the um, the front cover of another version? It has red spray, red red sprayed edges, by the way, uh, and the front has a map. I love these old maps. A pirate of infamy and one of the most storied and scandalous captains to ever sail the seven seas. Okay. Amina al Sirafi, don't care for me, has, has survived backstabbing rogue, has survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands. Oh, I and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. What? Okay. But when she's offered a job no bandit could refuse, she jumps at the chance for one final adventure with her old crew that will make her a legend and offers a fortune that will secure her and her family's future forever. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the higher the stakes, for there's always risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance at glory, to save with just a bit more power, and the price might be your very soul. Awesome. 
pirates? Give it to me. Oh, this this pile is big now. Uh, that's just gonna come down on me. I just feel it. And the last one is our paperback. And first of all, look at this. These sprayed edges. Can you see? It's a hard show. Um, but it's the Illuminaire that Illumina the Luminaries by Susan Denard, which is ooh shiny. <laughs> I've been hearing some weird things about this book lately, like as in oh it gives all the good vibes and then it's trash, and I'm like okay then I just got this book, but okay then. Um, let's see what it's about. <laughs> okay, Winnie Wednesday. That's the name. Wants nothing more than to join the Luminaries, the ancient order that protects humanity from the nightmares that rise in the forest of Henlock Falls each night. Ever since her father was exposed as a traitor, Winnie and her family have been shunned. But on her 16th birthday, she can take the deadly Luminary Hunter trials and restore her family's good name or die trying. I would just move away and start over because that doesn't sound like a good time but okay in order to survive Winnie must enlist the help of one person who can train her Jay Friday <laughs> are they do they all have weekday names oh no resident bad boy and Winnie's ex best friend <laughs> While Jay might be the best hunter in Hemlock Falls, he also knows more about the forest nightmares than he should. And together, he and Winnie will discover a danger lurking in Hemlock Falls that no one is prepared for. Not all monsters can be slain and not all nightmares are confined to the dark. I mean, um, it sounds like a good time, except that I'm already cringe laughing. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I just feel like I keep moving the camera. So yeah, that was my kind of pre-birthday early book day book haul. What was that? Yes, I've been buying some books throughout the, the year so far. Than the last technically five months, six months, January through May. Because it's the end of May now. My birthday's in early June, so it's... It works out. It works out somehow. But uh, yeah, I feel like I've deserved this pile and this is actually not as bad as it could have been. I did have a great time at Waterstones though, so there's that. I do love me a book shopping uh, trip. I wish I would have vlogged it, but I just kind of forgot to pick up the camera. I just went, books, give me all the books. Yeah, yeah. Do let me know if you've read any of these or if you're planning to read any of these and you know, tell me your thoughts. Let's have a chat. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care, up a boy.